sorry guys, I uh, didn't I didn't see you there. Um, just uh, just, just uh, just watching TV. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing something super fun. It is going to be a transformation video, as you could probably tell from the title of the video that you clicked on. It is a basic human to vampire queen tutorial. So I know I always get a lot of questions on, you know, how do I achieve my super like red um, smoky eye look and just kind of overall questions about maybe like about styling and just kind of how I get from point A to point B. This is, this is kind of like, this is point A, this is like A.5 because I guess point A is no makeup at all and my real hair, which nobody needs to see. Um, but this is like the in-between. So basic, you know, just your average neighbor to this and then back to this. It's time to start with the real video. So here we go. Step one, complete your base. I'm already, you know, kind of halfway there. I definitely want to add, of course, highlight and all that good stuff, but we're going to jump straight into the eyes because, you know, the, the eyes have it. The eyes are the, the windows to, you know, hell or the fifth dimension. How many dimensions are there? Are there infinite dimensions? I was like really good until I started actually doing the video and I think maybe it's because I'm like hot that I feel like I'm not I'm not in my groove but we're gonna do it anyways so starting with pinning my hair back because clearly it's in my face and I can't see anything Alrighty, so we're gonna start with the eyes. I'm going to, of course, do something super dark. I love doing a dark red smoky eye. So I'm gonna start with just laying down a base, adding some color. We're not gonna do like a super tutorial here, just kind of like a follow along. Um, I will kind of interject comments in between, but I just wanna do like an overall transformation. So if there's something specific that I don't mention or that I looks like I do it really quickly, go ahead and just leave a comment down below and um, I can always explain. So I'm just laying down that cream color. Looks like I'm doing nothing. It's actually kind of dark in here now that I think about it. Fun facts, I like to set my under eye concealer with eyeshadow or with like a, not a uh, highlight color, like a matte highlight. Like I use the Kat Von D shade and light palette and I'll just use the color at the top to set my concealer. I don't have good luck with translucent powders. I don't know. I feel like I'm probably the only person in the whole universe that has that issue, but they just don't work for me. So I did use a white concealer. I'm clearly pale, so that's the only color concealer I can do that's going to even brighten a little bit. Um, and then I just set that under eye with the, the cream color. Now I'm gonna use sort of a light pink. Go in. So next I'm gonna go in with red. My favorite red is the Sugar Pill Love Plus. It is just the nicest bright red, super pigmented eyeshadow. I'm gonna dip in or I did dip in, whatever. Super sparingly though, because we don't want to go in with a ton of color to start. Because I'm gonna be building up this eye for a hot minute. Like what is a hot minute as opposed to a cold minute? A sexy minute? Do you ever wonder that? Do you ever just think to yourself like why some weird phrase was invented? A warm minute, a tepid minute, a mild, a mild minute. And I'm just, I'm just blending this into the crease. So this is not gonna be a lot of precision for now because we're just trying to build up the color and build it underneath as well. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but every time I wear a red eyeshadow or like a dark pink eyeshadow, my eyelids are always stained afterwards. No matter what eyeshadow it is, definitely doesn't matter the brand, but it doesn't really bother me because I always wear eyeshadow every day especially I usually wear like a red or a pink but 
word of warning if you're gonna try this and then you know you have work the next day and you can't have a you know zombie toxic looking death eye then I would advise against because that's what you're gonna get and I think there, there's a reoccurring theme with my makeup it, it is Look which I call dead but delicious I don't even know what the very first thing was that inspired me to do this kind of thing I think I mean I think I'm I'm probably one of the eight bajillion people that saw a Marilyn Manson video when they were younger and was like, yep, that's what I want to be. That's literally what I want to be when I grow up. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I am so obsessed with this brush. I really feel like it's the thing that's been missing from my collection. Collection. What collection? I, you know. Uh, yeah, but no, I really feel like it's something that's been missing from my collection. I always usually just blend out and, and blend and do everything with one brush that's really small. Because I guess in my head I thought, oh, if I use a huge brush, it's not going to have accuracy. But that's not how things work, apparently. So you never know until you try. The brush that I'm obsessed with right now is the Morphe um, M441. Uh, hashtag not spawned, not spawned, spawns, 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 sponsored. <clears throat> yeah. I just legitimately really like this brush and I bought it on a complete whim. So highly recommend if you need a good fluffy fluff. Alrighty. So now we're just going to put more of this dark bloody red in here. So it looks like a nice like cut, like a, like a literal cut crease. This little a little gore with our glam, and then guess what? We're we're gonna go back to this fluffy fluff. I also always pack it on way higher than my crease, so that I get much more space to work with, and I have more of a you know wide-eyed, dead dead doll look. So. Blending out for a million years. That's literally the secret to every dark like look I do. Actually, let's be real. Any look I do is just packing on a lot of the same kind of color, blending it out for a thousand years, packing on more. I'm sure part of it is probably unnecessary, but you know, I like to think I'm not just wasting my time. So the colors just get deeper and deeper and darker and darker, spoopier and spoopier. You just wanna create depth basically. So I don't do this every day because it's too dang much work. Most days I'll literally use two different reds maybe and just kind of blend it, throw some shimmer on top and call it, you know, my sick cute situation. Fun days when I really want to go for it and I really want to be like top notch, like like queen of the damned like level, then I'll add in all the like dark purples and dark browns and blacks. Um, black I don't use super often though when I'm doing this. I feel like it just, I don't know, it doesn't create as much depth as using a, a plum or like a dark rusty brownish color. Um, but yeah, it definitely is more time consuming. So I am just enhancing my under eye bag now using a combination of like a dark red, a dark plum, and then a brown. Um, and really just accentuating that under eye area. Another reason why I really like doing all the color underneath my eye, just because of my face shape, my face is a little longer. So I have all this space I feel like I need to take up and I feel like it's not um, as proportionate if I don't put a lot of stuff underneath my eye. So it just kind of helps to balance out. So if you have, you know, more of like an oval face shape, if you pack color under your eye, then it's going to just kind of take away some of that extra space and just make everything a little bit more balanced. This is turning out way better than I thought it was going to. You know, honestly, it's just this freaking brush. I don't know. I'm really passionate about this brush. All right, so little pro tip here, P. Louise base, amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I know by now you've, pr you've probably, possibly, maybe, um, saw the video about some of my makeup favorites. If not, I'll just kind of, you know, put it at the end of this video and you can check it out. But I really love the P. Louise base and especially the Rude Boy Red base. I always want my lid to be a super intense red and I don't know why, but for me, the lid is not as easy to get a concentration of red as doing the crease and everything else. So when this came out, even though it's only in a set and it's kind of pricey, but I use the other colors occasionally, this really changed everything for me because it is just the perfect bright red and then no matter what you're gonna put on top of it, that red is gonna pop like crazy. A little bit goes a long way too. Literally like 
this much is gonna be enough for both of my eyelids. So my container is probably gonna last me a couple years. Honestly, it'll probably outlast its expiration. And I use it a lot too, which is nice. And it's, I think if it were by itself, it'd be like $10. But I wanna say the set is like 40, maybe something like that. But I think you get five colors in it. So I think it's worth. For me personally, I'm always on the hunt for red eyeshadows. That's kind of my um, weakness when it comes to makeup. So yep, yeah, there is my nice red base. It's super tacky and wet. You don't technically want to like set it with something, but at the same time, I mean, you're already putting eyeshadow, so it's like setting it anyways. I don't know. I guess some people set base with like a powder, like a translucent powder maybe. I don't know. You know, I'm also really feeling this gloss. I'm not a big lip gloss person, but I got um, a set of those Pat McGrath, like the mini glosses. And I think this is called like something fire. And it just has like these pink flecks in it. I don't know, I feel like my lips look juicy, which I don't feel like they normally do. And it's not a sticky gloss either. It just, it feels like nothing, which is nice. This is a, uh, this is my I just woke up face. All right, now I got my eyes done. I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm still having a really hard time doing my eyebrows in a teeny tiny mirror. I don't know what it is about standing up and doing my eyebrows in the mirror in my bathroom, but I just feel like it comes out so much better. So for this portion, it's just going to be a abracadabra. And we're back. Brows. And today was a good brow day. I am super happy with this. So one day I'll be able to show you guys how I do my brows. So continuing forth, I am going to pack on extra contour. So one of my favorite things I have here is my handy dandy notebook. The Necronomicon of makeup. It is the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs contour palette. It has the perfect, perfect, like grayish, purpley situation here. Great for sculpting out those nice dead cheekbones. Love it, love it, love it. I'm just gonna do a thing. Pretend like I'm a real YouTuber. Just realize my hair's in the way. Hey, Spending. Alrighty, so that is done. Setting spray time. Daddy, let her in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Unnecessary. Oh, I am wet. What was I doing? Highlight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have been obsessed with this highlight lately, the Daisy Danger highlight with Morphe. I think that it is probably the one of, one, I don't say the only, but one of the only highlights that doesn't make my eyes water when I put it in the inner corner. So I don't understand why, but I'm excited about it because that usually will ruin, obviously, my eye makeup. So for the most part, I just don't do an inner corner highlight because I know what's gonna happen if I do. All right, so um, that went a little bit more extravagant than I expected, but you know what? So I fixed it kind of. All right, I'm gonna wipe off this uh, juicy lip, just ju juicy, this highlight situation. This, uh, I guess I'm just a uh, uh, happy accident. Do not recommend a microfiber cloth to wipe off lip gloss. <laughs> We're professional. Time to do my lips. I can do this on camera. You know, let me put on my big girl pants. And um, today I'm gonna use the Kat Von D Vampire Liquid Lip. My favorite dark, juicy red. Yeah, boy. All right, looking pretty good, almost done. Now it's just down to the details. 
So I like gluing stuff to my face, as y'all have probably seen. One of the things that I like to do is get nail charms. So I found these really cute crosses. They're just nail art charms. I don't remember the exact Etsy seller, but it was definitely somewhere on Etsy. And I just use eyelash glue and glue them on. There we go. And then no vampire look would be complete without some lashes. So I've definitely worn these a couple times, but I, these are actually my favorite like daily lashes that I'm loving right now. They're from Sephora collection. They're the roll with me or roll with it. They're $8, can't beat that. And um, actually you probably could beat that, but whatever. Doesn't seem too bad. Um, but they're just super, they're super cute. And oddly, they seem more dramatic than some of the more dramatic lashes that I've worn, but they don't cover all of the color on my eye. So that's why I like them. So I'm just gonna let those dry. And in the meantime, um, blood. I mean, we can't do Vampire Queen without just a little bit of blood, right? So I use the Dark Blood Aged and Oxidized from Ben Nye. And I take a little sponge thingy thing that comes with like really cheap like theater makeup i think it was like 99 cents for this pack of like cream something or other and then it came with this weird textury sponge so i just put a little bit of blood on the sponge and then pray it doesn't get in my my wig um selectively Ooh, that's juicy you know, just, just a little subtle splattering. We're, you know, mostly a neat vampire. We, we know we're not heathens. You know, sometimes when you're going in for that, for that bite, you know, you just hit the vein just right. And there's a little bit of, you know, you just get a little bit of something, something on your face. But, you know, I try to remain neat and clean and not get too much particles all over my face. So just a little bit, just enough to make people know when you walk around that you mean business, but like, you're you're at least gonna ask first may i consume your blood may i if they say no then just walk away no means no even to a vampire on that note why am i so creepy uh, i just always picture like a shampoo commercial whenever i do like any youtube video and i just picture like the oh, 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 yeah. i'm not saying this is for the video but just in general that's what i picture you create your own fantasy Aha! Vampire magic. All right, and last step, because I forgot to do it earlier, but you know, any time is the right time. Um, my Kat Von D Glimmer Veil in Dazzle. I don't know why I looked at it. I use this every day. I just put a little bit on my eyelids in the center for that wet, juicy eyelid look. Go there. So now the light will hit it and it just makes your eyelids look wet. No, I think that's really everything. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of setting spray. <laughs> there we go. All right. And we're done. So I'm going to just go complete the look. I'm not even gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna complete the look. It's not makeup based. And uh, you know, I will be right back all right guys so this is the finished look i added my contacts and some hair and then the outfit and we are full on vampire queen fabulousness i did have fangs on a second ago i took them out just because i feel like i don't know it always makes my mouth look kind of weird but other than that this is everything um, if you would please hit the button down below, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thank you guys so, so much for being here with me today. It means the world to me. And I hope you guys have a, a lovely day, a wonderful, a, I hope you have a great day. Have a fantastic day. Why do I do the weirdest shit?